Felix von Luckner from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia www.wikipedia.org Graf Felix von Luckner, born in Dresden, Germany, 9th of June 1881 died Malmo in Sweden, 14th of April 1966, was a minor German nobleman and noted sailor who earned the epithets Der Seeteufel, the sea devil, and Die Piraten des Kaisers, the, the emperor's pirate, for his exploits in command of the sailing commissariat Zeadler, Sea Eagle, in 1916-1917. Early Life at the age of 13, von Luckner ran away to sea as an unpaid cabin boy on the Russian sailing ship Niobe, travelling between Hamburg in Germany and Australia. Arriving at Fremantle, Western Australia, he jumped ship and for seven years followed a bewildering array of occupations. Seller of the Salvation Army's war cry, assistant lighthouse keeper, having to abandon the job when he was discovered with his hotel keeper's daughter by her father, kangaroo hunter, circus worker, professional boxer, Fisherman, seaman, a guard in the Mexican army for President Diaz, railway construction worker, barman and tavern keeper. He served a short time in a Chilean jail accused of stealing pigs, suffered broken legs twice and was thrown out of hospital in Jamaica for lack of money. At the age of 20 he entered a German navigation training school where he passed the examinations for his mate's ticket. By 1908 he had joined the Hamburg Sudamericanische Line steamer Petropolis, intending to serve for nine months before volunteering to serve in the Imperial Navy for a year to obtain a naval commission. He had vowed not to return to his family except in uniform, and was eventually welcomed back by, by his family who had given him up for lost. He was finally called up into, by the Navy in February 1912 and served on the gunboat Panther. Von Luckner was also an accomplished magician, Kaiser Wilhelm was fascinated by his tricks and frequently invited von Luckner aboard his yacht to entertain important dignitaries. World War I At the beginning of the First World War, Germany converted a considerable number of merchant ships into armed merchant traders by equipping passenger liners and other ships with guns and sending them in search of Allied merchant shipping. Most of the armed raiders were not particularly successful, but they tied up considerable Allied forces in hunting them down. But by early 1915, most of the armed raiders had either been hunted down and sunk, or had been run out of fuel and had been interned in neutral ports. In the early part of the war, Felix von Luckner saw action at the ba Battle of Heligoland Bight, and during the Battle of Jutland he commanded a gun turret aboard the battleship Kronprinz Wilhelm. Wishing to revive commerce raiding, the Imperial Navy equipped the impounded three-masted sailing ship Pass of Balmaha, 1571 tons, with two 8.8 cm guns hidden behind hinged gunnels, machine guns, and two carefully hidden 500 horsepower auxiliary engines. Renamed Zeadler, or Sea Eagle, von Luckner was appointed its commander as virtually the only officer in the German Navy with extensive experience of sailing ships. The Voyage of Zeadler Leaving port. Zeadler left port on the 21st of December 1916 and managed to get through the British blockade disguised as the Norwegian ship Irma. Many of the crew of six officers and 57 men were selected for the ability to speak Norwegian if they were intercepted by the British. By Christmas Day she was southwest of Greenland when she encountered the British armed merchant cruiser Avenger. Avenger put an inspection party aboard Irma and all went well. Raider. On the 9th of January 1917, Zeadler came upon a single funneled steamer. She raised a signal requesting a time signal, not an uncommon thing for a sailing ship long out of contact with land to do, and too late for evasive action, she raised the German ensign. Three shots were needed to persuade the 3,268-ton Gladys Royal, carrying coal from Cardiff to Buenos Aires, to stop. Her crew was taken off unharmed, and she was scuttled. On the 10th of January 1917, Zeadler encountered another steamship which refused to identify itself. The German ensign was raised and a shot was fired across the bow of the Lundy Island, carrying sugar from Madagascar. The steamer refused to stop and four shots were fired directly at her. The steamer hove to and lowered its boats, but its captain ignored an order to come to Zeadler. A German boarding party was sent over and discovered that the crew had abandoned ship when the first shots were fired, leaving the captain alone. 
Later, Captain Bannister told von Luckner that he had previously been captured by a German raider and had given his parole which he had broken, thus he was not anxious to be a prisoner of war again. Von Luckner continued his voyage southwards, and by 21st of January he was in mid-Atlantic between Brazil and West Africa when he found the 2,199-ton French three-masted bark Charles Gounod, loaded with corn. Charles Gounod was quickly dispatched, but her logbook recorded information about other ships she had met and their intended route. On the 24th of January, the small 364-ton Canadian schooner Purse was met and sunk by machine gun fire, after taking off the crew, including the captain's new bride. The 3,071-ton French four-masted Antonin, loaded with Chilean saltpetre, was overhauled on the 3rd of February and soon scuttled. On the 9th of February, the 1,811-ton Italian Buenos Aires, also carrying saltpetre, was sunk, while on the 19th of February, a four-masted bark was spotted which immediately piled on sail in an effort to get away. However, Zay Adler's engines allowed her to overhaul the 2,431-ton British grain-carrying Pinmore. By coincidence, von Luckner had worked on Pinmore in his civilian sailing days back in 1902. Von Luckner took Pinmore into Rio de Janeiro in order to get more supplies before he eventually scuttled her. The next ship to be stopped was the Danish bark Viking, but as there was nothing unusual about its cargo, the neutral ship was allowed to proceed unmolested. On the morning of the 26th of February, the 1953-ton British bark British Yeoman, carrying a welcome cargo including chickens and pigs, was stopped and sunk, while the same evening the French foremaster Le Rochefoucauld fell victim to the Zayadler. The boarding party discovered that Le Roche... The Rochefoucauld had only recently been stopped by a British cruiser which was looking for Zay Adler. In the evening of the 5th of March, Zay Adler discovered a four-masted bark in the moonlight and signalled, Stop immediately! German cruiser! Bizarrely, the captain of the 2,206-ton French ship Duplay rode across to Zay Adler convinced that another French captain was playing a practical joke on him. He was soon disabused of the idea when his ship was scuttled. Zayadler's next victim, on the 10th of March, was asked for the time, but ignored her signal. Von Luckner ordered the smoke generator to be lit, so the 3,609-ton Horngarth turned back to render assistance to the burning sailing ship. A single shot put the British ship's radio out of commission, but this resulted in the only loss of life in the Zayadler's voyage, when a British sailor was killed by a steam pipe ruptured by the shot. Horngarth was soon scuttled by the Zayadler's now-experienced crew. By this time, von Luckner had the problem of feeding and keeping safe nearly 300 prisoners in, in addition to his crew. Consequently, on the 26th, 20th of March, the French four-masted bark Cambron was captured. Von Luckner arranged for the ship's top gallant mast and additional spars and sails to be removed, before putting his prisoners aboard Cambron under the command of Captain Mullen of Pinmore. The damage to Cambron ensured that Zayadler would be able to make good its, its escape before its location could be reported to the hunting ships. The Royal Navy was well aware of Zayadler's general location and set a trap consisting of the armed merchant cruiser Otranto and the armoured cruisers Lancaster and Orbiter at Cape Horn. However, a severe storm blew Zayadler considerably further south before she re-entered the Pacific Ocean on the 18th of April. Von Luckner now sailed north along the Chilean coast. By early June, Zayadler was east of Christmas Island and learned that the United States had entered the war. Zayadler turned her attention to American shipping, sinking the 529-ton A.B. Johnson of San Francisco on the 14th of June, and the 673-ton R.C. Slade the next day, and the schooner Manila on the 8th of July. By this time, the Zayadler needed to be laid up so that her hull could be scraped clean, so she put into the small island of Morpelia, a coral atoll some 10 kilometres in diameter in the Society Islands, about 450 kilometres from Tahiti. The Wreck of Zayadler Zayadler was too large to enter the sheltered lagoon of Mopelia and consequently had to anchor outside the reef. On the 24th of August, disaster struck. According to von Luckner, the ship was struck by a tsunami which wrecked Zayadler on the reef, but some American prisoners allege that the ship ran aground while the prisoners and most of the crew were having a picnic on the island. The crew and their 46 prisoners were now stranded on Mopelia, but they managed to salvage provisions, firearms and two of the ship's boats. Hide and Seek 
Von Luckner decided to sail with five of his men in one of the ten-metre-long open boats, rigged as a sloop and ironically renamed Kronprinzessin Cecilia after a liner. Ever an optimist, he intended to sail to Fiji via the Cook Islands, capture a sailing ship and return to Mapelia for his crew and prisoners and resume raiding. Three days after leaving Mapelia, they reached Aitu Island in the Cook Islands group, where they pretended to be Dutch-American seamen crossing the Pacific for a bet. The New Zealand resident, the administrator of the island, gave them enough supplies to reach another island in the group, Aitutaki, where they posed as Norwegians. The new New Zealand resident in Aitutaki was suspicious of the group, but he had no means of detaining them, and von Luckner quickly took the party on to the island of Rarotonga. Approaching Rarotonga in the dark, von Luckner saw a dark ship which he thought was an auxiliary cruiser, but was in fact a beach ship. Von Luckner pressed on directly to the Fijian island of Wakaya, arriving after a voyage of 3,700 kilometres in an open boat. Most people on Wakaya accepted their story of being shipwrecked Norwegians, but one sceptic called a party of police from the old Fijian capital of Levuka. On the 21st of September, the police bluffed that the non-existent gun on the inter-island ferry Amra would blow Von Luckner out of the water. Not, not wishing to cause bloodshed, and not realising that the police were unarmed, Von Luckner and his party surrendered and were confined in a prisoner of war, prisoner of war camp on Motuihe Island off Auckland, New Zealand. Meanwhile, back in Mapelia, a small French trading ship, Lutis, anchored outside the reef. Lieutenant Kling of Seadler, having heard of his captain's capture on the radio, sailed out to Lutis and captured it at gunpoint. The French crew was put ashore with the other prisoners, and all the Germans embarked on the ship, now renamed Fortuna, and set course for South America. The master of A.B. Johnson, Captain Smith, then took the remaining open boat from Mopelia with three other American seamen, and sailed 1,600 kilometres to Pago Pago, arriving on the 4th of October, where they were finally able to inform the authorities of the activities of Zeadler and arrange for the rescue of the other 44 sailors still stranded on Mopelia. The Fortuna, meanwhile, came to grief when it struck uncharted rocks off Easter Island. The crew scrambled ashore where they were interned by the Chileans for the remainder of the war. Escape Von Luckner still did not accept that the war was over for him. The commander of the POW camp at Motuihe had a fast motorboat, Pearl, at his disposal, and on the 13th of December 1917, Von Luckner and a number of other prisoners seized Pearl and made for the Coromandel Peninsula. Using a dummy machine gun, he then seized the 90-ton scow Moa and made for the Kermadec Islands, but the pursuing armed cable-laying ship Iris had guessed his destination and caught up with him on the 21st of December. A year after his mission began, the war really was over for Felix von Luckner. He spent the remainder of the war in various prisoner of war camps in New Zealand before being repatriated to Germany in 1919. For his exploits, Felix von Luckner was awarded the Pour le Merit, the famous Blue Max, Imperial Germany's highest decoration. Post-war life At the age of 40, von Luckner became a Freemason. He wrote a book of his adventures which became a bestseller in Germany, and an American book about him spread his fame widely. An entertaining speaker, he was widely admired for his seamanship and for having fought his war with minimal loss of life, and many cities in the, in the United States made him an honorary citizen. In 1937 and 1938, he and his wife undertook a round-the-world voyage in his yacht, as a Teufel, being welcomed in New Zealand and Australia, although some viewed him as an apologist for the Nazi regime. During the Second World War, Hitler tried to use him as for propaganda purposes, although as a Mason he was not in one of the Nazis' favoured groups of people. Von Luckner refused to renounce his membership of the Masons, or of the various honorary citizenships granted in the US, and consequently he suffered by having his bank account frozen. In 1943 he saved the life of a Jewish woman, Rose Janssen, whom he provided with a passport he found on a bombsite, and who subsequently managed to escape to the US via a neutral country. At the end of the war, the mayor of Halle, where he lived, asked him to negotiate the town's surrender to the approaching American forces, which he did, although he didn't return to the town after hearing that the Nazis had condemned him to death. Von Luckner was very strong and noted for his ability to bend coins and tear up telephone directories, none being thicker than the New York directory, with his bare hands. 
On the occasion of his visit to Australia in 1938, the Sydney Labour Daily published a cartoon showing Kaiser Wilhelm tearing up the Belgian Neutrality Pact, Adolf Hitler tearing up another agreement, and von Luckner tearing up a directory, with a caption, They all have the habit. After the Second World War, von Luckner moved to Sweden where he lived in Malmö with his Swedish wife until his death at the age of 84 in 1966. He is buried in Ohlsdorf Cemetery, Hamburg.